Hello, everyone. Welcome to A Writer's Rant, brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And for today's part of the adventure, I am joined by Nathan and Scott in order to rant about one-note characters. Oh, boy. Ooh. Blood uh, are going up. I, I've got to say this. So I, I when I started getting up this morning, I, uh, I, I, I got my phone my phone because uh, uh to to see if the alarm had yet gone off i'd woken up ahead of my alarm and i was like you know what i'm actually gonna play some nice music right here for me to wake up to and so i was happily scrolling to get some music to play as i was getting up and one of the very first things i saw on youtube was this was this little video about isn't it so wonderful that lumity is happening in the owl house and yes while that is a fine ship if you like it and i actually say that this is probably one of the much better done ships that I've seen in a while. The fact of the matter is, is that now these two characters, Luz and Amity, have been reduced to one-note characters in the eyes of the fan base and are being reduced to one-note characters by their own creators, despite the fact that within the show, they are written phenomenally. And this is annoying to me. And, ah... I hate when I find one-note characters in a story, and I hate when good characters are reduced to one-note characters. So let's talk about this. Okie dokie. Yeah. As somebody who has never actually seen the Owl House, other than just brief clips here or there that come across my YouTube feed, um, I don't have much to say on the Owl House per se, but as far as one-note characters go, I find that a lot in, especially fan fiction, where a lot of the times you will see a character who... Like, maybe they take the original character and they kind of boil them down to their very basic quirk. Like, whatever that character kind of quirk evolves around, they will use mm -hmm. that quirk as a bouncing board for writing that character. But the character, like, exists so much more past their quirk. They're, like, that... Having a quirky, quote, quirky character does not a good character make. And, like, I see that over and over and over again in fiction, in fan fiction, in all sorts of different media, anime as well. Like, everywhere that there is storytelling, you will see this happen. And it's frustrating because it's just, uh, it it frustrates me. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating because it frustrates me. That's very eloquent. <laughs> yeah, and especially when it pops up in something here you really enjoy, you really liked. And even though you still really love it, it still comes back... For example, my favorite story, my favorite book, is The Bulgarian by David Eddings. And there's several of the characters that come off a little one note at times just because the author wanted to have a character from this country in his world or from that country and kind of like showing exactly what that kind of person from that country is like. I still love the story. I still love the characters, but I, I have to admit it is one of the flaws in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another and, and what, one note character. Oh, sorry, Lars. Did you want to butt in? Go on ahead and say what you're going to say. Okay. Uh, another one note character that is in a mostly well written story is Breath of the Wild's um, Daruk. I didn't think he was a one note character until we actually got more of his character, i.e., in the DLC, we get his um, journal. Um, like his personal journal, they like discover his personal journal and you get to read it. And the entire journal is just him talking about how he's hungry and now he wants to eat rocks. Literally for pages of this journal, that's the only thing he talks about. And I'm just like, <laughs> this is the most frustrating thing ever. <laughs> the rest of the DLC like fleshes out these characters phenomenally and they all get like these great like character moments within the journals. But then there's Daruk. He's like, oh, I'm going to go eat some rocks. Met this guy named Link today. He was pretty cool, but he doesn't eat rocks. So I'm just going to go eat some more rocks now. And I'm like, how does this equate into characterization? Because literally they're just... I'm getting frustrated. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> I, I think one of, the, one of the things about specifically anime harems that just... And we've talked about this before, I'm pretty sure... But the thing that usually sinks an anime hair and quickest is just one night note characters. The mm -hmm. the girls that come in to match the main character, and the main character is usually pretty one note himself, their 
they're 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 just there to fill this role. They're like the childhood friend. They're the tsundere. They're the athletic girl. Y you know what I mean? Yeah. They fill that role, and that's about all their character is. And you hardly get more than that with that character, and it's kind of sad. Yeah, it is. Mm -mm. And and this is uh, and this right here is something that there's two somethings I actually want to say. A, number one is that something that you said earlier, Nate, about like how fans, especially when you see fan fiction, like they just fixate on one facet of a character, and that basically then becomes the character. Um, that is something that that happens really all over the place. Normally, it's because there's something about a character that resonates with you, and so you just that's just the one thing that you focus on and yeah. really it, you like, that's the thing is that I think to be like a response, like that's the thing to be a responsible fan. For one thing, you have to step back and you have to say, okay, while I love this character for this one aspect, what else is great about this character? And I think that's one of the things that then endears you even more to well done characters. Like I think about gravity falls and like, there's so much to love about the entire main cast of gravity falls. And that's because they've got so many things going for them. But then as a writer, <laughs> It, it's kind of, it's kind of the same thing you get a character in your mind that you really really love and usually it's because there's something about that character that you already love and so it's easy to accidentally create a one note character because you as the creator are just fixated on this one aspect about them that you love so much and so you're pulling it out again and again and again and again while you're writing but that actually it does not make for a deep character that just makes for something that you personally like, and it might not even add to the overall story in the end. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's very easy to get tired of the same one-note characters appearing over and over and over again just by using that stereotype again. My example is I I really enjoy getting into like gender bender, speculative fiction kind of stuff. And a lot of the like really short stuff, even the longer stuff, it the characters feel exactly the same. They end up having the same exact response to the gender bend happening, and it, it gets to a point where like, oh, I've I've read this a hundred times already. Doesn't matter what the details of it are. It's the characters reacting the exact same way. There's really no point in continuing to read this stuff. And mm -hmm. it kind of starts to ruin mm -hmm. the experience for you when he gets into that. Yeah. 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 And that and that's one of the things that you can easily avoid by having more fleshed out characters is that you no longer have just that one that one aspect that you constantly are like, okay, I know now what's coming. I've seen it before. And that's one of the reasons why I think a lot of um, a lot of pessimists say that really there's no such thing as uh, as a new or inventive story. Uh, why there's nothing original is because so many, so often we see the same thing done again and again and again. And the fact of the matter is, is that you can make something entirely original from something that has been done before. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the reasons. That's that. That's what endears us to some of the newer novels or shows that come on out. And it, it a lot of it comes down to how you utilize the characters. Coming back to what I was saying at the very beginning about the whole Owl House. Uh, thing is that this is that well, I love the Owl House because the characters are absolutely awesome. Luz and Amity are two highly complex characters, which is why it's so sad that the fans just fixate for one thing on like something like their sexuality. It's like, guys, come on, like there's so much more. I love watching Luz because of how random she can be. She's like a variation of Mabel, um, but like add in add in like Dipper intelligence into the mix which is which is pretty awesome to see or another character like king like king is normally played off as just this cute uh idiot but the fact of the matter is he's a cute idiot who has basically a napoleon complex who doesn't know what it actually means to have friends and is going through this process of learning to have friends and so much more and like that and that's that's cool like it does that right there it takes the cute idiot and does something a little bit more with them and makes them endearing because if it was just the cute idiot it'd be like oh well that's nice after about five episodes you'd say can we look at someone else other than king yeah so that's ah uh, but here and i think this uh, kind of goes I, back to what we were saying before we started recording where it's like so many times when you have like that cute idiot character or just like a comedic relief character in general is that they're used there to be comedic relief and beyond that there's very little character depth 
Um, you were mm-hmm. you brought up Lopin from the Stormlight Archives, and I have to agree with you oh, that there's very Lopin little character depth. <laughs> yeah, but you look at characters like Wayne from the second Mistborn series, where he has a lot of character depth, and I feel like I, in my own writing, I try and stay away from that uh, that comedic relief character altogether because I feel like your cast is so much. Your cast is much more relatable if everybody is the comedic relief character and everybody is also the um, emotionally... That was was a good one. Uh, The emotionally deep characters. It's raining and thundering outside, so hope you're enjoying... Yeah, hope you're enjoying the Um, (laughs) ambiance. No, and this... And and here's the... It's come to come back around full circle to what I was saying earlier about how easy it is to fall into the trap of writing one no characters. One of the things that makes Wayne a superior character to Lopin, even though they're both comic reliefs, is that we get to explore Wayne's character um, in just reacting differently to different experiences um, or, or to different situations. Lopin always just laughs everything off. There is nothing that is not funny to him. And as a result, Lopin is just a joke. He's just a walking one arm joke. And spoiler alert, when he gets his arm back later on, it's just like it actually then makes him no longer seem that funny because it's like the one thing he could always point to point at to and laugh is now gone. And it, it's without it, without any guarantee. In fact, actually, we see then in the third book that he still is just the same. And the, there's no character growth on his part whatsoever. He's just a walking joke. Wayne, on the other hand, we get to see Wayne, like, uh, there's one chapter that's just one day in the life of Wayne, and in that chapter we get the fact that he has PTSD, that he's got guilt, that he is, that he's desperate for a girlfriend, and all these things. And it, and it, suddenly you realize that half of, the, half of the humor to his character is to hide the pain. And yeah. then on top of that, he's competent. Like he's not just a he's not just a, some bumbling idiot that you laugh at. He's actually a competent fighter and a competent detective, which makes him then a great uh, complement to Wax, who is a very serious Sherlock Holmes esque detective. Oh wow. yeah, <laughs> that's some good. Thing. I think that was perfectly there. timed. <laughs> I, I think another thing that tends to just ruin the experience for people is when you have a story that has a one note villain in it specifically and we have talked about villains before i know Mm -hmm. as well but just connecting that to it as well it just if your villain isn't just as great as your main character that clash at the end there's really no point to it yeah Mm -hmm. yes and uh, I mean, I'm going to uh, to I'm going to quickly jump on that right there and say like within within my first book, Knights of Halley Cruise, like you've got you've got multiple villains, you got tons of different villains, and kind of one of the biggest glaring ones is Gary. And yeah. you guys you guys have read get you guys have read this right here. Like Gary is just an absolutely despicable villain. The thing though is this is that Gary is kind of one note. If I'm being if I'm being all honest, his uh-huh. obsession with the main with the main character Jessica is what drives him to do is what drives him to do horrible things, and and so in that way he kind of comes off one off. And the only way then that it works, this like here's the thing is that there's certain ways that you can make a one note character work, and it is because if you highlight just how much of an outlier they are like even among the other villains the other villains are just all like dude like you're messed up because they because like they are all motivated by much more complex things they're much more complicated characters and gary is just so one note that it kind of highlights just how despicable he is uh but how the thing is, is that, he is. that yeah how obsessive is how obsessive he is that only works because the other characters are fleshed out um and it just as I said that highlights just how of an uh, how much of an evil oddball he is, uh, and and granted that can only last for so long. Gary only remains a threat with like that like that for so long, and so one of the challenges then throughout the series is developing from just this obsessed creep to someone way more, um, someone way more dominating, someone <laughs> way more imposing. Maybe I wouldn't say respectful because I myself as the creator don't respect this no, uh, despicable. Sort of, uh, crud in any kind of way. Right? But at the same but 
the challenge is then taking him and turning him then into a much more conniving, uh, much more villainous character who then becomes complex because of how he then goes about doing what he does. How is he going to try to fulfill his obsession? That is then what becomes complex and everything. So you can take this single note driven character and then turn them into something uh, more, uh, more complex, something like very similar to, for instance, a character... Um, man, I'm just using cosmic characters left and right right now. Someone like Kelsier. Kelsier is driven by one thing: to get revenge for the death of his wife in the in the in the first Mistborn book. And that is easily something that could be turned into a one like that you could take and just turn into a one note character. But Kelsier is easily one of the most uh, charismatic and personable characters in the entire Cosmere because the way he goes about getting revenge is just so complicated and he's a he's an actor so he puts on different masks for every situation that he's in and it keeps you on your toes when you read his chapters yeah we could yeah, definitely absolutely. talk a lot more about this but i think i think we just end up talking in circles so yeah and here's and here, here's the thing like i start i'll, I'll end by saying this like i'll end with where i started so i started off with the owl house and to be all honest like as i said like i absolutely love this show and what other people have done with the characters doesn't actually ruin my enjoyment of it because it's still such a well-written series. And that's one of the things that brings that like brings fans ultimately and keeps them there is when is when a story and the characters are fleshed out, when there's something for everyone. When the show ends and we move on, everyone who is obsessed with the one note side of things are going to leave. But the people yeah. who really appreciated a story for its depth are going to stay. And so you as a creator, what you want is you want people to feel the impact of your story. This is why writing fleshed out characters, while harder than just running with one note characters, is always going to be more rewarding. Because believe you me, people are going to come back to your stories again and again, and they will want to have more of what you got. Well said. Yeah. And without further right. ado, if yeah. you enjoyed this, <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. It helps us out a ton. Also, join us on our podcast, Camille's Harem, where we talk about writing advice and read terrible fanfics. We are also started a new podcast called Need for Weeb, that you should join us there if you enjoy anime. Uh, you can also find us on Reddit, where you can join in on the discussion. And if you don't have a writing group, you've got us. That's what we're here for. We're on oh, Tumblr yeah. and Twitter, kind of, not really, and <laughs> a lot of other <laughs> places. So just go out and find us. We're there. And without further ado, uh, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>